early generation cars and aircraft had little or no electronics. That means any steering wheels, yokes, pedals, or levers mechanically controlled systems on the vehicle. For example, pedals in a cockpit might directly pull these flight control cables which move the airplane's rudder. Modern vehicles, like this airliner, have dozens of electronic sensors that help operators drive or fly them more easily and safely. Drones, like this quadcopter, have an array of sensors to help fly them. One of them is an accelerometer, which can work to keep the drone level even when I take my hands off the controls. Speed is a measure of how fast your distance changes over time. Let's say you're going 100 kilometers per hour. That says it takes you one hour to go 100 kilometers. Acceleration, on the other hand, is how fast your speed changes over time. Say, a sports car might take three seconds to go from zero kilometers per hour, which is a complete stop, to 100 kilometers per hour, which is going pretty fast. When a car accelerates, your body will try to stay in place as the car moves. This is why it feels like you're being pinned against your seat whenever a car accelerates quickly. To measure acceleration, let's attach a springy lever arm to another stationary arm. I've put the whole demo at the end of this rotating pole along with a camera that moves with it. As we accelerate in one direction, the springy lever arm moves away from the stationary arm. And if we accelerate in the other direction, the lever arm moves toward the stationary arm. Let's add two metal plates to the inside of our stationary and springy lever arms. Parallel plates that are in close proximity can store energy in an electric field. This energy storage device is known as a capacitor. We can measure the effectiveness of a capacitor with this capacitance meter. As the plates move closer together, the capacitance increases. And as the plates move farther apart, the capacitance decreases. An accelerometer, like the one on the front of the Circuit Playground Express, has tiny versions of these lever arms packed into this little chip. Thanks to these lever arms being placed in all directions, we can measure how much the Circuit Playground Express is accelerating in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. Interestingly enough, Albert Einstein proved that gravity was not a force, but rather a constant acceleration that pulls objects toward each other. For most of us, this means that we feel the effects of gravity as it pulls us toward the planet. During the Apollo 15 mission, Commander David Scott dropped a hammer and a feather on the moon to show that objects with different masses will accelerate and fall at the same rate, as long as there's no air resistance. That means we can measure the effects of gravity using an accelerometer. With the lever arm upright on the table, we're reading about 4.7 picofarads on our capacitance meter. When we flip the contraption, gravity pulls the arm away from the base, and the capacitance changes to about 4.1 picofarads. Let's use the Circuit Playground Express to measure the effects of gravity. We can use it to make a sort of electronic level. In MakeCode, go into light and drag a graph block to forever. In math, get an absolute of block and drop that into the graph block. Then go into input and drag an acceleration block into the absolute of block. See this little XYZ symbol on the Circuit Playground Express? This gives us orientation for the axes. Acceleration in the X direction would be moving the Circuit Playground Express left and right toward the buttons. The Y direction is back and forth toward the USB and battery plugs. Finally, the Z direction is up and down away from the table, assuming you had the board lying flat. If we hold the Circuit Playground Express flat, then gravity will pull down in the Z direction. The accelerometer will give us a number, negative 1023 to be exact. If we flip the board upside down, then the accelerometer will read positive 1023. Since we just care to know if the board is flat, we'll take the absolute value of that number. Click on the drop-down box for acceleration and change it to measure the Z acceleration. Click on the plus symbol on the graph block. Change the up to number to 1023. Now, our Circuit Playground Express will light up NeoPixels according to the acceleration experienced. Finally, go to loops and snap a pause block underneath the graph block. Leave the delay at 100 milliseconds. Try it in the simulator. We pretend that the board is lying flat on a table, so gravity will be pulling down on the board, which lights up all the LEDs. We move the mouse over the board to tilt it from side to side. As we do this, the LEDs will go out, showing that gravity is having less of an effect on the Z-axis. Download and copy this code to your Circuit Playground Express. As the board lies flat, all the NeoPixels will light up. 
If we tilt the board, you can see how some of the lights will go off. We could use this to determine if something was more or less parallel with the surface of the Earth. The idea of being level is useful in construction, but it's also the beginning of how drones can stay in place all by themselves during flight. What other uses for accelerometers can you think of? I'm sure in some small way they can help you stay level-headed.